Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. So, if you're a content creator like me, you may be wondering what is the best sound level to set my content at before I post, just so it has enough volume but not too much volume? Let's explore that. Okay, so I'm going off camera today just so I don't use up the valuable real estate of the screen here because there's a lot to look at, a lot of data, and I want to show you findings and things and experiments that I've come into as I've played with this whole sound levels thing, particularly for YouTube, but there are some other things uh, that you may be concerned with. So this is a good baseline to work from. I found this site which I wanted to share with you. It is lufs.org. And it is a fantastic free resource where you can use either a wave or a FLAC, a FLAC file type, uh, strictly for audio, to help measure where your file is in relationship to what some of these content platforms will be expecting. So there is a little bit of variance I've noticed, but it can give you a good baseline. And I'll show you just kind of how I've walked through this and checked things out. So to start, this actually started from a question from one of you. Thank you for asking about what would be an optimal audio level, particularly for LUFS. And if you're unfamiliar, LUFS is loudness, loudness units full scale. Um, that is different from decibels, which has been kind of a previous standard for audio measurement. Decibels will measure in, in pressure, in sound pressure as it impacts things. That is one unit to determine really how much impact the sound is having, but there's this new scale which is dependent on the, the digital adjustment within the range that the file was being played. It's actually dealing with the perceived loudness versus the pressure level. There can be a difference there. So this is kind of the new way and, and somewhat almost a truer way of, of determining how the sound will be impactful to an audience using LUFS. And this site gives you the ability to measure that because uh, I haven't seen uh, that really widely deployed in a lot of tools. I like to work within a tool that's called Caden Live, uh, that's over here, uh, which presently doesn't have a unit metering for that. It does it in decibel still, but there are some ways that you can figure out where that's going to be. And I'll walk you through that because I did a lot of experimentation and I'll take you through that. But first, I want to show you some data here. So first thing I did is I used this handy site this LUFS.org to measure several samples. I started first with a sample that was unchanged as I normally record like I'm doing right now and just no adjustment, no, really no, no uh, compression, no normalization, none of that. I put it up on YouTube as a private file and I measured it, all right? And I did the same thing where I downloaded that file and I did the same thing here where I measured it again. <laughs> I wanted to see if there was any difference before uploading and after uploading. And also I tried to measure what was going on while it was up there. Now that I was not quite as successful because real-time metering is a little tricky, but again, I'll show you what I found. This is unedited. I took a file, I made it a WAV file, I put it up into lufs.org, and this is the initial data that came up. Now I'll say that YouTube in particular, I found several write-ups and posts that say they normalize to minus 14 LUFS. Now, interestingly, I could not prove that by looking in the documentation directly from YouTube. There is nowhere I could find where they specifically state this is our standard. So that does seem to hold true among creators, and I'm assuming that they have a way of measuring that in real time, but I could not verify that conclusively. <laughs> the evidence t tends to lean toward that, but I could not find that in writing. All right. So looking at this first screenshot here, this is from LUFS.org. I measured one unedited. You can see how this is coming in at about 20 and a half LUFS. Okay. Minus 14 would be a little louder normally. This is kind of quiet. Um, just to kind of briefly explain what we're looking at here, we have a couple different measurements. This is the peak in loudness units, the loudness units full scale. That's as loud as it gets when measuring loudness, actually. This is the, the average, okay? So this is more important to me right now than the peak where it jumps to. 
although it does kind of give you a range of, of how loud it gets versus the average. And then we have the decibel true peak, how loud it actually got in decibels, and the rest of this, you can look it up if you want to, but those are the really the more important metrics that we're going to play with today because those were the, the more meaningful ones for determining what's that optimal level. So stick with me on these first three ones. Along the top here, these are really the recommendations of adjustment that LUFS.org is, is pit pitting against where you measured and then what they suspect these other platforms would do to compensate for that. Uh, you can see how YouTube is saying based on this one, oh, we're not, not projecting any change. That actually I don't think is the case because if it holds true to the minus 14 loudness units, this is really quiet. And I did observe when I was listening to it that it did seem to have made a change <laughs> where it did compensate. So take that for a grain of salt. It can be a little bit of a guide to say, hey, is there a potential that there, there's going to be some real-time adjustment? Possibly. And the reason I say real-time is I actually did, as I said, go through and measure what happened after I uploaded it because I measured it here before I uploaded it. And I actually took another step and I said, well, what happens if I download it after the fact? Did anything change? And sure enough, no, nothing changed. The file is as it was. If we compare these things, the peak is still what it was with a 0.1 minor change there. And virtually the same with the, the overall short term, the 0.01 difference. All right. So really, for all practical purposes, this file is not changed any great length. <laughs> you can see how that there's really no impact there. So really, we're kind of led to believe that whatever YouTube is doing is happening in real time during the player. Now, I don't think they're exposing that to you, because if we look at it from that perspective, let me see if I can find the right image here. And we bring up uh, this is the no adjustment file. They're telling me, OK, well, volume is at 100 percent. It's normalized to 100 percent of what could be used, and it's averaging at about minus nine decibels. OK, uh, that's just what they revealed to you in this in this case, the sound pressure level. Uh, and that's accurate to where the file was. It was a quiet file. Minus nine is pretty low. Uh, you work your way up to zero going this way on the scale. Uh, going down would be getting quieter. So that's that's a pretty quiet file. It's utilizing 100% of what it was. So it's not really telling me, if I'm reading this correctly, what it was doing to compensate. And if you listen to it, there was a difference. So whatever's going on is going on behind the scenes. It's kind of a secret sauce of the player, so to speak. And they are doing that for you. But the reason I would say it's important to pay attention to these things is that if you're going to take your files somewhere else or host them yourself, you would want to have <laughs> that optimal level. So just to kind of prove this out, that there is value behind this, one of the things that I did is I took a mastered file. I took somebody's audio that had been mastered and somewhat professionally prepared, and I measured that. This is up. Uh, this is measured, and you can see, okay, accurate to to that optimal range, that minus 14 that YouTube is using, and there's a little bit of variance on the platforms. That is where this file is. It peaks about 14 and three quarters LUFS, and it averages just under 14 at minus 13 and three quarters. Okay, so that's the range. It's less than a full unit variance, or roughly a full unit of variance. Um, but that is a mastered track, and that is the range that has been released <laughs> for, for common consumption. So that is accurate to what I read, that about minus 14 LUFS is where you should aim for based on that. So then let's take this back, and I decided to play with, well, I'm going to put a max file out there and see if anything changes, just to kind of play devil's advocate here and see if there's any change there. And you'll notice that, again, nothing really changed on either side of that. It was a very loud file that warned me, eh, it's too loud. <laughs> and you can see, yeah, 0.493 is pretty loud when you consider minus 14. That's 10 units louder than would be recommended. That's utilizing a lot. All right. Same when I brought it back down. There's really not much variance uh, to report there after the fact of bringing it back down. So then 
If we understand that a mastered track does fit that criterion of minus 14 LUFS and there's no change before and after and there's things happening in real time, we've established it's good to do because that's the the accepted range that is that sounds good and can be transported pretty consistently across other platforms, then let's figure out how do we achieve that. <laughs> So let's get into Caden Live. That's the tool of choice that I like to use. And I'll show you that from all the tests and things that I did, really the thing that seemed to work best is to aim for a decibel range because you can, there is some write up on conversion between decibels and LUFS, but it doesn't seem to be consistent. Um, I found that at about between minus four and zero decibels, that that seems to be a good range close to that minus 14 LUFS at the end of the day. Now, you also have to be careful because when you bring in audio, especially when you're doing talking like I'm doing, there is a lot of variance when I speak. It will get louder. There will be bursts of loud, bursts of quiet. All right. So more than just normalization, you have to actually do what's called compression and expansion. <laughs> you have to shrink that audio waveform so that it's not quite so extreme. So if we look at a file here, and by the way, you can turn on the audio spectrum. Uh, what you can do is within the panels that are there, uh, you can right click uh, within them, I believe. Uh, let's see if I were to do it here. And you can see the different uh, dockers that you can flip on. This one is just the, uh, the audio audio spectrum. So you can flip that on. Also, you can see something similar if you wanted to in the audio mixer uh, down below. Uh, that is possible as well because it will give you the same levels. This is kind of interesting because that also plays back the EQ and it also stays with you. Uh, I like to have the effects stack up while I'm working uh, just because that gives me both views at the same time. All right. As I mentioned, first step that you'd want to do is minimize the amount of variance in the waveform. And you do that with the compressor and an expander audio effect that's in the effects. If you were to go look for that, it is right there under volume and dynamics. All right. And this actually has really excellent guides if you hover over them, what they do. But in short, <laughs> the attacks are the amount of increase a rapid increase rather that happened in the waveform. Uh, usually zero is a good place to start. They actually say, uh, I think to start around zero, um, three point, point three. Uh, but I found that was actually just too much. So I kept it at zero and that was a nice comfortable level without trimming too much. Decays are the other way. If you have a rapid dip. Um, so Again, I went with about 0.5. That seems to be a comfortable range. You will need to listen and, and do some measuring with the uh, the playback, with the metering, and see what's happening. Uh, but that seemed for my voice, <laughs> that, that was a comfortable amount of truncation, if you will, compression and expansion on both ends of the waveform without disrupting how I sound and without causing peak, okay? Um, this over here will set how how aggressive the change is. <laughs> so I left that as default. Um, I did not really see a need to play with that, but you can if you want to change with how the waveform, you know, how it how rapidly it will leap into, or how directly rather it will re leap into those adjustments. Gain is almost like a preamp. You can bump it up a little bit, and I did that because I said my files are quiet. So I added a little bit of preamp here. And you can set the initial volume to a lower value if it is already a little bit hot. You can bring it down so that coming into it, it is quieter. And then post, <laughs> as you work through it, you could increase it if you wanted to. Um, I did not need adjustment. It was fine coming in the gate because I'm already quiet and I'm bumping it up. So that's how you use the compressor expander. And then on top of that, we're normalizing. I did find that normalizing without compressing was too much because, again, there was just too much dipping going on in the waveform. It was too difficult to find a comfortable place where I could hit that target comfortable loudness with all the different rises and dips. I had to compress it and expand it just a bit um, within a comfortable range, and then I could normalize it safely. All right, so this is actually really handy here in that within normalize, it already has the unit of measure that we're looking for, LUFS. So target, I'm setting that to minus 14. 
and that will be the overall loudness. That is not an average, I just wanna say, okay? <laughs> so make sure that you understand this is the max, okay? That's your target. Um, so that is our target. Um, this is the overall measurement you wanna do. LUFS will factor in uh, more data if you allow it to. Um, you can give it more sampling space, which I did. These are shorter clips, but you can increase that. And the more sampling space you give it, the more accurate it can be for what you want to achieve with normalization. It'll measure more, it'll take in more data points, and it will be able to more accurately average and make adjustment over the scope of a longer clip that may have more change than just in a short range. So you may need to tweak this up to a longer time span. If you have a lot of variance in the beginning, toward the end, towards the middle, um, make sure that you set that sampling time appropriately. The maximum gain increase will be the max that it can change uh, for normalization and likewise the decrease how much it can adjust within that adjustment period as well this is actually not all that different from compression expansion um it's kind of the same principle if you will uh, except we're trying to achieve a very specific target uh, loudness in this case okay um, so those are the two things there and then the maximum rate of change within those decreases that's what i'm setting here and that limits how much change it can make so with those things i found that to be the healthy metrics that the, the healthy uh, changes that i could do without modifying my voice and without giving away quality and that actually did give me the ability to achieve making it loud enough and when i was done with it that actually put me in the proper range of where I needed to be, which I did measure. So I'm gonna do this so you can actually also get an idea of what you do here. I'm going to bring in the files. I did two of them just to kind of see if it held true. And this puts me close enough to that optimal range. I did play with this for probably about two hours, trying to get the balance between compression, expansion, and normalization. And this was what I felt was a reasonably close mix. Most of the platforms you can see that is really, really close to what they'd be expecting. Really, really close, um, which they'll, you know, curtail one way or the other. And that's that there's not really going to be one measurement that fits them all. But for most cases, this will suit the need and it will do the trick for what I'm trying to do. So again, if you're going to come at this from KDN Live, which works really well, then yeah, look at it that way with the compression expansion and normalization and measure it. Aim for that zero to minus four decibel range. That seems to be a safe place uh, that translates to roughly minus 14. And there's a little bit of compensation that's going to take place, but you're so close that it's indiscernible. And that is the conclusion of all these findings. And I really hope that's useful. I found this so interesting because you're getting into the engineering perspective of what actually happens with the waveform and how you can tweak it and get more out of it without compromising it. So that was just so interesting to me. And it also was eye-opening because I'm coming in pretty quiet and I'm gonna make some adjustments to the way I do things. So thank you to you who asked that question. That really put me on an interesting journey and I really hope this is valuable and beneficial to you. If it was, Give me a thumbs up, please. Also, subscribe if you haven't done that already so you don't miss out on the other exciting videos in which we'll discuss things like this and other open source tools like Caden Live, like Krita. Go check out those other videos if you haven't had a chance to explore those other free tools which are very powerful and can give you increased ability to express art that you may not have had before. Also, leave a comment ask a question if you haven't done that before join the community of learners so we can go stronger in our experience together like from this comment which i appreciate so much thank you for watching and for being a part of this experience if you're interested in supporting the channel i do have a patreon which there is a link to in the description also i have ebooks for sale uh, which there are also links for no pressure but it does help keep the channel going in addition to watching this video if you're looking to to get involved in that way so thank you so much and I will see you at the next video.